Hey guys, so we're David DeFranco here from ddefranco.com slash ask, which is your open forum for submitting questions such as this one. Boom. I love my dramatic booms. Anyway, today's question comes from James B. Wood, and this is an excellent question. It's kind of lengthy, so bear with me, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy. James says, hello, David. I'm going to buy my first Mac ever soon. Awesome. Seriously, that's awesome. Welcome to the light side. I'm gonna get some hate for saying that, but whatever. All right, so I have the choice of the MacBook Air 13 inch or the MacBook Pro 13 inch without retina display. I'm stuck on which to buy. I don't take my laptop out of the house much unless I'm going to a friend's house. I, I would like to edit some videos on there with iMovie and do some Photoshop and Dreamweaver. The Air has a 1.8 gigahertz core i5, four gigs of RAM and a 128 gigabyte SSD. The Pro, has a 2.5 gigahertz core i5 with four gigs of RAM and a 500 gigabyte HDD hard disk drive. I would use this laptop for all my schoolwork and I don't really have any other storage options. Which one should I buy? Thanks, James. All right, James, this is an excellent question. So basically you're trying to decide between the MacBook Air 13 inch and the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now for those not catching on, the main difference between these machines, at least in my eyes, but you know, besides graphics, horsepower, and all that stuff, is the SSD versus HDD. Now, an SSD, a solid state drive, is, is, well, exactly what it sounds like. It's not moving. There are no moving parts whatsoever, so you can read and write your data much, much faster than you can a standard hard disk drive, also known as an HDD. Now, I gotta say, from my personal experience, I love my solid state drive. I mean, I never, ever see myself going back to a regular standard hard drive, at least for my primary drive. I have an SSD in this computer as well as three standard hard drives, which is fine for reading and writing data, but for my main boot up drive, SSD all the way, and I love it. However, for James's case, I might have to go the other way because he's mainly trying to decide between two 13 inch laptops, an Air and a Pro. Now, if you want my honest opinion, I say go for the MacBook Pro, even though it doesn't have an SSD. And yes, you always have the option of installing an SSD later down the line. That is, if it's easy to open, as I know the newer MacBook Pros are impossible to open. At least that's with the retina display. So that's something you'll have to figure out, I don't know, sometime in the future. But anyway, getting to the point, my personal opinion is if you're going for a 13 inch laptop, just go for the Pro. Because if I were to get a MacBook Air, I would stick with the 11 inch model. I am a huge, huge fan of the MacBook Air 11 inch. I mean, I love that form factor. It feels perfect, it feels small, portable, and it feels like it's capable of doing semi-pro work on the go. But since you are focusing on pro work on the go and you don't really need that 11 inch screen, you're going for 13 inch, then I say yes, best decision ever, just go for the MacBook Pro, 13 inch, you will not regret it one bit. This is especially true, James, since you said you will be working in both Photoshop and Dreamweaver, which are definitely capable at running, you know, just fine on something like the MacBook Air. But for a MacBook Pro, you'll definitely see a nice boost in performance and overall speed. I could talk all day about this, you know, I'm just looking for words now. But seriously, the point is, just go for the MacBook Pro 13 inch, you'll love it. And yes, James, huge thanks for the excellent question. I really appreciate it. Guys, I'm telling you, the more questions I get, the more content I can make. So keep those questions coming over at ddfragon.com slash ask. I greatly appreciate it. Now, since today asking the asking question video, you guys get a free audiobook. Now, I'm not going to give you the choice between Steve Jobs and iWatts because I feel like I'm overdoing that. Well, you can never overdo Apple content, in my opinion, because I love Apple that much. But I am going to do another Apple-related book. Just, it's going to be one book without making you have to choose. And that book is Icon, Steve Jobs. I've owned this book for a long time. Actually, I believe this book was ripped down from bookshelves for a little while, because I don't think Steve Jobs was too happy with it. I could have that wrong, but I do know there was some kind of controversy behind this book. But still, guys... Check it out, it is yours for completely free. Normally costing $13.27, this book is yours for completely free, so just sign up below, audibletrial.com slash the creative one. Just search this book and it is yours to keep forever. Seriously, forever. I mean, you could be reading this until the day, well, you you die, but that's kind of morbid. Let's just say until you're 90 years old. I know that's pushing it, but you never know. And of course, huge thanks to Audible for making this deal possible, guys. I greatly appreciate your feedback. Keep those questions coming. ddfranco.com slash ask. There is a squirrel running by. Very distressed. Squirrel! I freaking love that movie. You know, up.
old house, balloons, floating to the sky, little Boy Scout dude getting his badge. It's a great movie. Speaking of Up, did you know that Steve Jobs used to be the CEO of Pixar? Isn't that fascinating? I mean, a lot of people mainly remember Steve Jobs as the CEO of Apple Inc., as you should, but he was also CEO of Pixar. I just think that's really awesome. All right, now I'm just dragging this video out. I, I love Apple Facts. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your continued support, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.